is Michael Corcoran. Christopher, thank you. The RFU has published a summary roadmap for a return to rugby in clubs. The objective of the roadmap is to provide high-level clarity to clubs and ensure COVID-19 safety measures are taken before activities can resume. Clubs have been asked to focus for now on COVID-19 safety planning. A range of training and education supports will be available to guide clubs through this stage. The return to rugby guidelines will be issued to all clubs next Friday, the 5th of June. Shamrock Rovers players and staff underwent a second round of COVID-19 testing this morning ahead of what's hoped to be returned. Rovers, along with Dundalk, Bohemians and Derry City all returned negative tests last week as part of the pilot programme to ensure a safe return for football at all levels. And Udian Igalo is staying with Manchester United after the club agreed a loan extension with Shanghai until January 2021. He scored four goals and eight appearances before the coronavirus suspension in England took the season well beyond the loan deal's May 31st expiration. Michael, thank you indeed, Michael Corcoran there. Uh, from me, Christopher McKevitt, that is all uh, from the news that won this lunchtime. Thank you for listening. Laura Whelan edited the programme, Dave Gibson on sound, Amory Donlan was the broadcast coordinator. From everyone here, have a very good afternoon. Drive Time with Mary Wilson. Weekdays from 4.30 on RTE Radio 1. Andrew Bridging, good evening. I can understand why he was concerned about whether 15 days after having shown symptoms, whether he could drive for five hours. He took a trip to Barnard Castle, 30 miles away, to test his eyesight. And, and I myself was reported to the police in Leicestershire for breaking the lockdown, uh, apparently for the heinous crime, answering questions from constituents. But if but you want to test your eyesight, you go to an optician, don't you? Drive Time on RTE Radio 1, sponsored by Zurich. Thought of setting up a savings plan and put it off for another day? Talk to your financial broker about a Zurich savings plan. Restart your journey towards a greener Ireland for 202 with Hyundai. Your Hyundai dealer is ready to answer your questions about electric, hybrid and eco-friendlier petrol and diesel models. Because Hyundai don't have just one. We have all the power options. Visit Hyundai.ie to discover our 202 offers. Restart your journey towards a greener island at Hyundai.ie. We're treated to highlights from the National Concert Orchestra's recent collaborations at 2 this afternoon. But now it's time to join Olivia O'Leary for Poems in a Pandemic. A poetry program special. Poets like painters catch the moment. Empty buses go past. To stare through glass at you. But they're also time travellers. They can capture what's happening now and compare it with last year. Or find its echoes in events centuries ago. 1348, the Black Death. The children were kept from the danger. The parents suddenly had more time. So for the next half hour, we'll have poems about this strange quarantine that we're still living through. How it's cast a different spotlight on home, on relationships, but how it's also... Standing side by side, making idle conversation as we wait to shake hands with grieving neighbours. And just as we can hear the birds sing when the world quietens down, maybe we can better hear the voices of poets too. Jessica Trainer is one of hundreds of poets all over the country who've given their take on the COVID-19 pandemic. In the days after the COVID-19 lockdown started, I saw one particular recipe for a baked good circulating around the internet more than any other. And it got me thinking, what is it about banana bread that makes us turn to it in moments of crisis? Banana bread. When civilization breaks down, bananas are the first to go. Their skins bruising hickory on sun-warm windowsills. Breath with the policeman's knee on his neck. Small comforts can be made from little deaths. Two 
poem describing family life at home under lockdown. One from Steve Denehan from Kildare, followed by his eight-year-old daughter, Robin. Into the third week. The only thing outside now is the virus, dying slowly. The attempt of one virus to kill another, futile, this time. The antidote was simple in the end, inactivity and isolation. Which led to my daughter putting my hair into a mohawk, followed by nail polish. I chose purple, lipstick, I chose black. My face was painted, a spider on one cheek, a flower on the other, a red lightning bolt on one temple, blue star on the other, a purple spiral on my forehead. I wear a hoodie emblazoned with a taco and nacho arguing. Want a taco about it? It's nacho business. Shorts and Aquaman boot slippers from morning till night. These are bad days. The world is empty now. One of them is 18 years old. The murder of George Floyd. I hurt like a because I have lots of stuff to do. Like play football in your back garden, or even in your hall if you don't have a back garden. You could go for a cycle, and a lot more than that. You could also watch a film. That's what I do nearly every day after my school at home. Keith Payne lives in Spain, where he's withdrawn with his family up the mountains, along with dogs and sheep and bell-ringing goats. His poem explores the world of working at home. Lucy. Lucy's work took her as far as the garden shed. She often stood at the hall mirror to cut her fringe on the way out. There was nowhere to sit in her shed, just a gas ring where Lucy would fry up the mushrooms. On the way to work, she picked up all the leaves that had fallen from the apple tree in her garden, poured them into a vat of clear glue, then rolled them into a sheet she hung on the line, just to let the light shine through. The next two poems reflect the experience of those the Taoiseach has dubbed cocooners. Trish Bennett writes about her mother in Leitrim, but first we hear from a former school principal, Thomas Walsh, at home in Dublin. His poem is called Just a Passing Thing. I saw you come into the garden and leave the food there on the doorstep before you stepped back into shade. Such a simple thing for you, my child, and yet so fraught, so full of history, askew. Looking through our front window, it's as if the glass distorts our story, almost wantonly. Could it be that my old eyes are on the blink again? Or is that my mother bringing bread and milk out to the high meadow? leaving it there on the headland in the shade of the whitethorn. My father, busy with the scythe, not approaching either. A wave was love between them. Not an embrace, but large enough to fill a field. And so it must be now with us the space between us cut out like a chasm. But we must know that out of depths like these great futures grow and will again. What seems like space is just a passing thing. My mother still lives in County Leitrim where she's cocooning with many others. And she was a member of the original Choir of 